Um, can I ask what expenditure has, been, has the government incurred in developing the Australian curriculum up to the point that the minister announced the review to be led by Dr Donnelly and Professor Wiltshire? Um, I understand you may need to provide an estimate here, um, and then maybe you could take the precise figure on notice, but just a sense of what the costs have been up to this point. Um, the first part of my answer to the question, Senator, will be that the Australian Curriculum Assessment Reporting <coughs> Authority is um, funded 50% um, by the Australian Government and 50% by states and territories. So your question was the Australian Government. Yes, it so was. So I'm going to talk <coughs> in was, total. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and if you like, what I will do is I'll provide some figures here, but maybe follow it up with a. Thank you. Know, you. That would be the answer. Just, but, certainly, as much information as you can give now, I'd appreciate. But that. certainly, the uh, headline figures are in our actual expenditure, um, and I will need to. I've got in front of me project costs and then staffing costs, and I'd need to, as I'm reading these, make you know double check what I'm reading here adds up to the total. But for, yeah. certainly, in project costs, which is the uh, cost of um, uh, engaging writers, the cost of you know, conducting consultation and the like. Uh, if I go back to 2008-9, it was, uh, and I'll do these in rounded up figures, but 150,000. In 2009-10, 3.7 million. 2010-11, 3 million. 2011-12, 3.2 million. 2012-13, uh, 4.5 million. Um, they're the project costs, and then we will have uh, some uh, some salaries with that. Typically, I don't have the broken down salaries of the different elements of our organisation, and we, you know, we could argue the CEO has a role in curriculum development. We don't necessarily get it all down to that <laughs> <Sorry>. role. <coughs> uh, but you. I might, if you're agreeable, Senator, you know, provide that um, supplement my what I've given you now with uh, the project costs plus the salary costs. Thank you. On for notice, that. that would be good. And it, so I just can be quite clear. You indicated that um, ACARA is funded 50 per cent by the federal government and 50 per cent by states and territories. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So they're the total figures that ACARA can account for. All right, because my next question was, um, do you have an estimate of what the states and territories have incurred in this process? So I, I, in a sense, that encompasses the, some of the costs that they have incurred because they've contributed to the running costs of ACARA. Would there be other? Um, would you? Would you? Would there be other costs that would be additional to what ACARA has? Um, incurred in terms of states and territories preparing for this, this um, Australian curriculum as well, consultation that they do independently, etc. I'm sure uh, that's the case. Uh, in terms of the effort um, that is uh, there, I'm sure people could account for that in other ways. So um, we talked, Senator O'Neill refer referred to New South Wales, so the Board of Studies in New South Wales will have had its staff providing advice and um, you know, managing consultation processes and reports. Um, that would be true of others. Uh, that would be true of the different organisations that are there. Some of those, so we don't, but we don't have that. But yes, there would be additional, as in any of these enterprises, uh, the effort that goes into them um, does a, is, is, could be accounted for. Thank you. And but you we don't, we, you I won't have be, an estimate of I won't that. be in a position no. to be able to no. give you that. All right, also, thank you. Also, Territory Centre, as you know, have, a, have curriculum assessment authorities in a yes. sense. So they've yes. always had a role for many, many years now. Yes. Board of Studies in New South Wales, the Curriculum Assessment Authority in Victoria. Yes. That have either developed their own state based curriculum or their state based mm. assessment programs before NAPLAN came along. Um, it would be difficult, other than going to their own education budgets, probably to get Thank a sense you. of what they I did look think like. it was probably unlikely you'd be able to give me that, but I was hoping you might have some sense. But look, um, now in developing the Australian. Right, just out of your question, can, can I just. On the same topic? On the same topic? Please. Um, on this issue? Because I've. Yeah, yep, okay. it's on the same yep. issue. Um, the impact of what we've just been discussing on um, electronic NAP plan delivery and curriculum de development. Um, what is that? We know that there was money to do those things. Now, what's going to happen, and what is now not going to happen? Can, could we come those? back to that one? I wonder. Do, do you mind if we come back to that one. in a minute? Right. Just because I've got a sort of, I've wanted Keep to follow going. on this particular. Sure. Aspect. Thank you. Um, in developing the Australian curriculum, did you consider the curriculums of high-performing nations, <coughs> other other nations? Yes, we did, Senator. Mm -hmm. What What can you say it, briefly? <laughs> I'm sure you could talk about this at length. Um, what did you learn through that process? Again, I'll preface um, the part of that. We did, um, in terms of looking at curriculum in other countries and high-performing countries, um, we uh, did two key elements. One is, a, if you like, a straight comparison. When you look at their documents, what are uh, 
young people expected to learn in those countries. Um, and then certainly for the first uh, four areas, English, sorry, let me be correct, English, Mathematics and Science, we added another process, a benchmarking process, bringing in a methodology that had come out of the USA, which has been used in relation to benchmarking about our expectations and coverage of curriculum and engaged um, teachers within Australia to look at our curriculum and curriculum of other countries, and so you get more an empirical measure. So we've done that. Um, I, uh, um, your, your question about overall, because again, we can go into individual areas to say what impact it did it have at certain times. Um, but uh, we um, typically, we sought to learn out of that to make sure that we were pitching our expectations at a level comparable with other places. But, but equally along the way, that's not always possible because you also look at the whole curriculum and you look at uh, what's possible here. So for example, one that's often cited, which is, I was going to say fresh in my mind, but that's maybe relatively fresh in my mind, is when you look at Singapore, say, and you look at some of the uh, numeracy developments of young people in Singapore, and on some aspects they had higher expectations than we did, we had higher expectations on other, and so that, that empirical benchmarking helped give us the, you know, where we, the dimensions mm -hmm. overall, and we were also interested in endpoints by the end of year 10, and also progress along the way. And, and that became an interesting discussion to say, well, why might they have some of the young, young people achieving some higher standards earlier on, but the same end point? And then you look at the whole curriculum, and that was because earlier on, we made the decision that instead of just narrowing it down early, we were ende endeavouring to put a broader curriculum in the early years to make sure there was, by design, space for the arts and other areas. So you get into some interesting discussions and questions about, of, of that order. Certainly, yes. I might say it, it was equally hard for us to, we, we, we did seek to benchmark against DOC countries, one of our selection criteria was ones that we could easily access. Mm -hmm. So um, we haven't necessarily benchmarked against, say, Korean or Chinese because that requires a translation uh, exercise. Um, but countries like Singapore and others where we could access it more readily, that's, that was a consideration along the way. Thank you for that. And I think I heard you answer a question earlier to say that you received on this particular aspect of your work, the development of the Australian curriculum, 17,000 submissions, is that right? Yes, yeah, about 12,000 uh, from the first, in the first four or five areas and then the other, uh, other 5,000 or so in the, um, last, in the areas that we um, just made available on our website in the last week. Right, okay. And um, how long did you, last sorry, last question? Oh, I've got so many. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, I have to make sure this is a good one. <laughs> Put the others on notice. <laughs> it is, it is indeed. Um, because I think it's huge, obviously hugely important to the public about what's going on and how the process of eight, of, of uh, what, five, six years, seven years. Senator Wright, making. Um, if I could just work out which one I'm going to ask. Um, that's right. Another one. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I was going to ask how long you spent considering the submissions. Perhaps I can ask you, do you think that the four weeks that's been allowed for assessing submissions in the current review of the Australian curriculum is adequate? I don't think that's um, the timeline that applies, Senator. I think... For assessing the submissions, people not, been not for receiving, receiving them. I think them. that's Mr. Randall. six weeks, I think. The consultation period, six weeks, I'm asking about assessing Senator, so I guess I, I, uh, I don't know their detailed timeline well enough. Um, that, well, that's what I'm putting to you, that my understanding is that the consultation period is six weeks and the assessment period then to, before the report's due is, is the four weeks. Is, the, that, is that adequate, do you think, in the context of what you've seen? Well, I don't think the context, I don't think it's a reasonable comparison to compare what we've done and what's being asked here, because what people are able to bring to bear in making submissions, they're referring to something they're already familiar with, um, that they have been engaged with over time. So any submissions that they're making now are on the basis of their experience previously. So I think they're able to do that. Then the uh, reviewers, they have some specific terms of reference that frames it. They're, they've been framed in a particular way, and so I think they're all being set to, to guide the process. Um, the reviewers themselves working with the Secretariat, um, there are uh, quite um, sophisticated ways to be able to bring all that analysis together. So um, I don't 
except if you um, allow me to say that, that yeah. comparison is a valid comparison between what we did and what's being asked in so the review process. So just one more question, and please. Oh, I just Chair, need just one, one more. Oh, thank you. This will be a brief one, I think. Um, just given what you've outlined about the extensive rigorous process you've undertaken and your capacity as a CARA with arguably ex total expertise in the field, more than perhaps anyone else, do you accept the claim that's been made that there is left-wing bias in the Australian curriculum as it is now being implemented? Um, my observation... I'm, well, I'm asking... That's an opinion. Well, I'm asking uh, Mr uh, Randall... Senator, I'm not going to respond to that. My observation about the process all the way, all the way through the process... No, it doesn't necessarily. I'm asking, is it, a, is it an opaque curriculum? Is it a... You know. The question has been asked. Could you answer it very briefly? Because time All the way through the process, question. Senator, there is a range of contests. Without doubt, the development of the Australian curriculum has been contested and people will have a whole range. And I think, I think professionally and personally, that's absolutely fantastic. It's <laughs> too important an area for us to not have a ongoing discussion about what we want young people to learn. But, but the Senator McKenzie, you wanted a quick you. comment? And, or and question my 